Good day, everyone. Welcome to the part two of our lesson about functional notional approach. I am Krishna Jewel Abaliana, and at this juncture, we will discuss what are the activities we can use in the functional notional approach and what are the advantages and disadvantages of functional notional approach. But before that, let us have a recap of what is functional notional approach. So these approach focuses on the communicative meaning of words rather than its grammatical structures. From the words itself, it focuses on the functions, the purpose of communicating, and notions, which are the words or ideas that we have to understand in context, rather than its grammatical rules. Now, let us determine on what are the activities we can utilize for us to effectively apply the functional notional approach in teaching. So we have here six different activities. Let us first discuss role play activity. So these activities provide learners with the opportunity to practice using language in real life situations. So this can be the avenue for them to communicate effectively. Let's say for example, we will ask students to have an act about how to make a hotel reservation or how to order in a restaurant. So through dialogues, they are able to practice on how to communicate effectively when doing this situations, when facing these situations. Next, we have the information gap activity. So these require learners to exchange information within a group or with their partners. So these tasks helps them on practicing how to express their opinions, their ideas with their classmates. So let's say for example, we have an activity where one student is given a picture and must describe it, must describe the picture to another student. So this gives them um, an avenue to um, creatively describe the picture in their words. So you, this can enhance their language skills. And we also have the problem solving activities. So these require learners to work together or solve a problem or complete a task individually. So individually we can have, we can ask students or we can give them possible moral dilemmas that they should um, share on how to handle that situation. So in that way, it can enhance their critical thinking skills and also they can um, practice on how to communicate effectively by sharing on sharing how to solve those problems and also if we will give them different problems by group these students will be able to communicate within their group to work together and to share their ideas together now let's have the discussion activity so the examples of these are the roundtable discussion and panel discussion. So in this activity, learners will be able to share their ideas about a variety of topics like what they know about culture, what they know about um, different aspects in life. So in this way, they can communicate with their classmates, they can share their opinions using the language so it can enhance their language skills. We also have the project based learning activities, which are more on a longer term project. So these are um, usually by group. So through these activities, um, students will be able to communicate with their classmates and will be able to plan research for them to finish the task. And in that way, they can. Um, effectively communicate with each other and use language in different ways. And also we have the listening and speaking activity. Knowing that 
Functional and notional approach focuses on the communicative meaning of words. So through listening different um, stories, literature, or news broadcasts, or, um, students will be able to adapt on how to correctly pronounce a word, which they can also use when they are communicating. And also, through these activities, we can give students a chance to speak also through in an interview or they are the one who will make a broadcast or news. So in that way, they can practice more on how to use language effectively. So those are the activities that we can utilize when we are applying the functional notional functional notional approach. Now we will proceed. What are the advantages of the functional notional approach? So first we have here the develops communicative competence. So in this way, a um, functional notional approach can develop students' competence in communication because this focuses on teaching students how to communicate effectively. So it also focuses on teaching students how to use language appropriately in different situations. Also, functional notional approach can promote learner autonomy because this approach encourages learners to take responsibility for their own learning and set their own goals. Hence, they can learn in their own pace. They can um, practice communicating in their own ways. So, um, it promotes um, student-centered learning. So, also, this approach fosters cultural awareness because Functional notional approach uses authentic materials. It exposes learners to different cultures and ways of thinking. Let's say, for example, there in our activity, which is the discussion activities, we will expose them or we will ask them to research about the different culture. So through those authentic materials, Learners will be able to know more about the different cultures, which can also foster sensitivity and cultural awareness. So, functional notional approach is not just teaching students on how to communicate effectively, but also it um, encourages students to communicate with sensitivity. Next advantage of this approach is the uses of real life situations. So this approach um, exposes students to different things that happen in real lives. So which makes the learning more engaging and also this prepares students on how to deal in real life situations. So basically communication is really um, a big aspect in our daily li living. So hence when we apply the functional notional approach, um, encouraging students to communicate well, they can be able to face real life situations without um, stress because they are able to handle it by communicating others effectively. And last advantage of um, this approach, it emphasizes communication over grammar. A lot of students are, um, does not want to learn language because they think that the rules are too, too, um, too difficult to understand. But in this approach, um, they, it encourages students to just go with the flow, to use language in communicating rather than just feeding them the rules that can um, hinder them on how to use the language in communicating. So that those are the advantages of functional notional approach. So how about the disadvantages? So even though functional notional approach have are ben beneficial to learners and even to teachers, there are also um, disadvantages of this approach. So first is the lack of focus on grammar. So 
when we focus much on the descriptive part of um, using the language, students are prone to grammatical errors, especially when writing. And we don't want that since um, all writings are, or all written works can become a document itself. So we want also students to know grammatical rules. And this is the downfall of functional notional approach. It lacked focus on grammar. But when we have the right balance of teaching the prescriptive and descriptive language, so students can still be able to um, know grammatical rules. But in this, um, in this approach, these, it lacks focus on grammar and also it is difficult to assess learning because um, functional notional approach students have their own pace of learning and it is more on how students can communicate so it is difficult to assess unlike when we focus on the structure rules we can base it on the rules but in this approach it is difficult to assess and also, this approach has limited applicability to specific language needs. Since there are um, specific language needs like in the academic or the professional context, which requires more formal and technical use of language, and functional notional lack focus on grammar, so it is its downfall that um, when we when we use too much of functional notional approach, students are not, um, they don't know how to practice formal text or the technical use of language. Another disadvantage is the lack of emphasis in writing skills since this approach focuses on communicating and speaking, so it lacks emphasis in writing skills. So students will have um, difficulty in writing because it is more on speaking. And lastly, it is the dependency on authentic materials. This can be a downfall because there are limited um, or limited availability of authentic materials. So it can also limit the effectiveness of approach if we can't find the right authentic materials. So those are the disadvantages of functional notional approach. So in summary, functional notional approach emphasizes practical applications of language in real life situations. So it focuses more on how to use language in our in communicating in real life situations. So it takes into account the learner's needs and encourages learner autonomy. So it focuses on what the learner needs to know for them to apply in their um, daily communication. So it helps learners communicate effectively in a second language. And this approach utilizes activities that are applicable for real life situation. So despite the disadvantages of functional notional approach, this approach is still advantageous in teaching and um, encouraging students to communicate effectively using language or the English language. So that's it for functional notional approach. I hope you learned something and I hope you understand all about it. And these are the references of this topic. Thank you so much for listening.